Number 98. Which of these molecules and ions contain polar bonds, and which of these molecules and ions have dipole moments? And then we have, let me just color that in, but then we have SNCl3 minus. Okay, so I see a negative charge here. That means that we're dealing with an ion. Ions, remember, are charged species. Now, the first thing that they ask is whether this, this ion has polar bonds. But in order to really figure this out, we should really see the bonds, right? But from what they gave us, do we see any bonds, like a single, double, or triple bond? Not that I see. So with these types of questions, especially if they're asking for polarity, dipole moments, polar bonds, nonpolar bonds, just take a second and draw the Lewis structure. It is one extra step, but I promise you it will unlock a lot of information to help you with you know, the, the questions that they're asking. Now there's tons of videos on this channel, just designated to drawing the Lewis structures. So you could always check back uh, if you need more guidance with those. This one will kind of be like a quick inversion. So you could pause the video if you want to and see if your Lewis structure matches mine. So in this case, I have a tin, an SN, surrounded by the three chlorines. Doesn't matter where the three of them are, um, just as long as they're around the chlorine. And with this, I do need single bonds between each SN to CL. And then I have six electrons around each chlorine. So three pairs to give chlorine the octet. And then let's see, um, SN is carbon. I have uh, four valence electrons. So one, two, three. It needs one more, but there's a negative charge. So you gain another electron, so now you have two. And since it is an ion, we should bracket it and put the negative charge in the upper right-hand corner. Okay, now I can clearly see the types of bonds. And when you're trying to find out if something has a polar bond, you're only looking at one specific bond between the two elements. Now in this case, you have Cl to Sn, Cl to Sn, Cl to Sn. They're all the same bond. So it doesn't matter which one you pick, right? So maybe I'll say we'll have chlorine that has a single bond to the tin Sn. Let's see if this is a polar bond. Now polar bonds have electronegativity differences. They have differences between 0.4 and 1.8. Now remember that a difference is just a fancy way for saying subtraction. We have to find those electronegativity values and subtract them and see if we're in this range, the 0.4 to 1.8. So um, for my electronegativity, chlorine is 3.0. So I'll put 3.0 here. And then tin, where are you, tin, 1.8. Now when you're subtracting these numbers, just always know that you should subtract the bigger number from the smaller number. Electronegativity differences cannot be negative. So if you do get a negative, just make it a positive. It's the absolute value. So 3.0 minus 1.8, it looks like we got 1.2 as our answer. And that looks pretty good to me. So does 1.2 make the cut? Yes, it does. It's in between 0.4 and 1.8. So we know that we're dealing with polar bonds. The first part is done. But now, do we have a dipole moment? Well, let me color this in first, and then we'll say that a dipole moment only occurs when you have a asymmetrical distribution of electrons in your molecule. And dipole moments only come about when you have polar molecules or in this case, since you have a charge, a polar ion. So we're not going to be looking at the individual um, atom, you know, bonds anymore. We look at the molecule as a whole. And that's where SNAP comes into play, where if your molecule is completely symmetrical, it is nonpolar. But if you have a asymmetrical, a different um, drawing on your molecule or ion, it's a polar ion or a polar molecule. But there's one big key trick here to just memorize, that if you have a polar molecule, one way to know if you have a definite polar molecule or polar ion is that if your central atom, 
whoever that is, the one in the middle, if your central atom has lone electrons, those dots, it is automatically polar. So in this example, I have tin, which is SN, and it's got dots. So I don't even care what's going on around the ion here. Tin has those lone electrons. This definitely has to be a polar ion. And because of that, it has a dipole moment. And that's the answer for this one. So we got polar bonds and we got a polar ion, which, a di with, with, you know, which has a dipole moment. But that's it. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. Thank you so much for being part of this journey, for being so supportive. And yeah, for giving us the motivation to keep doing this. So thank you so much. We're like 5,000 uh, videos in at the moment and almost 40,000 subscribers, which is absolutely incredible. It's all because of you guys. So thank you so, so, so much. I really hope that we are providing great educational content that you guys can learn and succeed in. Um, but yeah, that's our whole goal. And hopefully, you know, in time we can start building this channel up to not only have physics, math, and chem videos, but maybe we could branch out into like standardized exams like, you know, SAT, uh, MCAT, and help you out with that as well. So sky's the limit. And it's, you know, that's for you guys as well too. Keep your head down, keep learning, and success will come. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.